I must say, Thelma, you cannot beat a good piece of lamb's fry. Thank you, Ted. Yep, I'd like a dollar for every bit of lamb's fry I cooked for the diggers during the war. Before or after they ate it? <laughs> Watch it, boy. Montgomery himself specially requested my lamb's fry. Yeah, to fix a hole in his boot. <laughs> Listen, boy, I've had quite enough of your devil-may-care Monty attitude. You never saw him tarry hooting around some disco in a John Travolta suit. <laughs> Monty was a man. He had a moustache to prove it. Now, <laughs> now Ted, just eat your dinner, Craig. Oh, no thanks, Mama. Eat it. Dad, I don't like lamb's fry. Have some respect for your mother. I'm not having her frying over a hot lamb all day to have you cut it home. <laughs> Turning up your snotty little university nose at it, now eat it. I don't want it. Don't you don't want me, boy, I'm your father. I had to do ten hours overtime to pay for that lamb's fry. <laughs> Why, during the Depression... Oh, not the bloody Depression again. Yes, the bloody Depression again, God bless it. Why, in those days I saw whole towns go mad at the mere sound of lamb's fry. Oh, bull. It's true. Doubtless you have heard of the Gundawindi lamb's fry riot of 34. <laughs> Come on. No, it's true. When the bottom fell out of the meat market, there was a run on the butcher shops. My father, your grandfather, my father, managed to salvage a piece of lamb's fry. But he was cornered by the mob and ended up losing his ear. So sharpen each of dinner in memory of the grandfather's ear. I don't want it. If you don't eat that, you'll go to bed without your dinner. Now, come on, Ted. He doesn't have to eat it. If he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. You can have it on toast in the morning for breakfast. I'm not having it on toast in the morning. It's a waste of good food. <laughs> Stick it in a jackal and I'll give it to the dogs. <laughs> yes, dear. Here, drink your tea. Thanks, Craig. There's yours, Craig. Uh, well, what, have the cows gone on strike? <laughs> what do you mean, dear? Well, the milk's a bit thin. I can see through it. <laughs> There's no milk in it. Why not? Because you don't take milk. Well, Craig's got milk, you've got milk, why haven't I got milk? <laughs> because you drink black tea. Since when? Since 1956. <laughs> you gave up milk so we could pay off the Hills Hoist for the Olympics. Are you sure? Yes, Ted. How much do we owe on it? Nothing. Oh, well, why haven't I got milk? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe this. Why don't you stop bitching and have some milk in your tea? I will. No, you won't. Why not? We've run out. <laughs> you could have some carnation. I'm not having that vegetarian milk that comes from a flower. <laughs> I want the real milk that comes from a shop. Off you go. Come on. Go down the shop and get some milk. But it's raining. I'm not going... You want it, you get it. Listen, you little oversexed ferret. <laughs> When I was a boy, it was an honour to go and get the milk. Yeah, yeah, when you were a boy, you had to ride a horse 20 miles underwater and then rub two emus together just to get milk. <laughs> Quite right. Now, get off that university bum of yours and go. I'm not going. Listen, boy. Ted and Craig, stop it. I can't take any more of this bickering. I'll go. You're not taking a Kingswood. <laughs> I'll take my Datsun. All this arguing over no milk. I'll be back in a minute. Now, no more fighting. Mm. Oh. Now, see what you've gone and done? See what I've done? Who wanted the milk? Well, don't blame me for your pig-headed I'm not going to get the milk for my only father attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you think you own the world. No respect. <laughs> What's to respect? Listen, boy, what about all the times you wanted milk and I had to go and get it for you because you were too bloody lazy to get out of your pram? <laughs> a baby. How can I push my own pram down to the shop? That'd be right. Kids today are bludgers. <laughs> Why, when I was six months old, I had to push start the horse and ride 50 miles to a baby <laughs> health centre. <laughs> Just so as I could have a look at a photograph of a bottle of milk. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what worries me. Where do you think you're going? I'm just going to read the paper. Oh. That's my paper. Now give us it. Oh. You want to read the paper, you get your own paper. This one's mine. You've read it. I have not. I haven't read Mandrake. <laughs> well, what's the news? Oh, the spider people have got loathed by the leopard skin. <laughs> Proper news, politics. What's happening with the oil situation? What oil situation? I checked the oil, the dipstick was all right this morning. <laughs> That's right. Typical. You just don't care, do you? Everything's fine in one back crescent, so bugger the rest of the world. Oh, why not? 
They don't care about me. I'll start caring about them when Jimmy Carter drops in an office to Silver Frost the Hills Hoist. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? Yes? Noah's son. Wh which one? Yeah, I know where it is. Thanks very much. Who was that? The cops. It's Mum. She's had a prank and they've taken her to hospital. Crikey, mother of God! <laughs> I'm not in heaven and I'm not an angel. <laughs> Hello. Bet you thought you were in heaven just then. You thought I was an angel. No. <laughs> oh. All the other women have been in that bed have thought that. Why? Because they'd wake up and look at me and say, God, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you? Oh, I had an accident. <clears throat> oh. You should have had it yesterday. Cos Miss Australia visited this very ward. Cos it's all been done up, you know. Oh, really? Yes, it was much worse than this before. She stood there, pretty as a picture, snipped the ribbon and said, I declare this door open. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Australia opened the door. Yes. Very intelligent girl. Wonderful ambassador for a country. She gave me a boomerang. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> of course, I've always said, and I've always said this, they should give Miss Australia to someone who's achieved something. Someone who's done something for the country as a whole. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Mm. Who were you thinking of? Sarah Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Australia, Sarah Lee. Of course. It's got a ring to it. Because charm runs in the family. I've always liked her mother. Who? Peggy Lee? <laughs> <laughs> no. Margaret Fulton. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Fulton, Sarah Lee's mother? Well, I never knew that. Well, 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 well. Just a minute. They've got different names. Yes. Well, I think young Sarah had a rather unfortunate marriage. Oh, that's why she turned to cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <coughs> young girls today, marriage, divorce, another marriage, another divorce. Not like when we were young, things, things were different then. Yes. I remember when I was young, my mother said to me, Marge, that's my name. <laughs> Marge, marriage is forever. So if you get the chance, grab the bludger and screw him to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your husband in here last night? <coughs> yes. Ah, well, never mind. <laughs> Good marriage, is it? As good as can be expected under the circumstances. <laughs> He's an animal, is he? Who, oh, Ted? <coughs> no. Oh, they're all animals. My Wally's an animal. A real animal. What does he do? He's a concert violinist. <laughs> Breed of a man. <laughs> that boy who was in here last night, the one who was calling you Mum, was he your son, was he? <laughs> yes. Oh, he's a fine figure of a boy. <laughs> Not like my Graham. Very sensitive boy. Designs lovely frocks. <laughs> he's a dress designer, is he? A butcher. <laughs> but his heart's in fashion. <laughs> Wally says I spoil him, but I don't know. You only have him once, don't you? Yes. Thank God. <laughs> Hello, Mum. Oh, Greeted, dear. Hello, and Bruno. Hello, Mrs B. Here. Oh, Bruno, gorgeous. Oh. I got you nighty, Mum, and the bed jacket and those other things and some fruit. Oh, thank you, dear. How are you, Ted? Got you a newspaper, Phil. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Don't chuck it away. I haven't read Mandrake yet. <laughs> what did the doctor say? Apparently I'm resting comfortably. They get the x-rays back this morning. What the x-ray? 
Me? Well, I know that woman, but what bitch? Animal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which bits. Well, you're all right, aren't you? I don't know, Ted. The doctor hasn't told me how I feel yet. <laughs> How's my Datsun feeling? Not too good, Mum. It wasn't responding to treatment, so we shot it. <laughs> you shot it? You shot an injured car? Oh, I don't understand. <laughs> it's a write-off, woman. Oh. Oh, what am I going to do now? I don't know. Walk, I suppose. Animal! <laughs> Craig! Where's Craig? I wasn't there this morning to wake him up. Ted, you have left him in bed. <laughs> Who is going to iron his don't shirts? Don't worry, oh. Mum. Craig is all right. He's staying the night at a mate's place. Oh. Mate? Huh. I know where he is. He's shacked up with one of them gloom-faced folk singing university Sheilas. Well, maybe she'll iron his shirt. <coughs> iron his shirt? She'll probably smoke it. <laughs> what about you, Ted? Oh, don't worry about me. I'll just go on starving. Doesn't matter. I mean, while you're tarry hooting around here wearing out my Medibank card, <laughs> having photographs taken of your legs, I'll be starving. When are you coming back to get my brekkie? Oh. Listen, you. Ted, Ted, if you brought the primus and some eggs and some bread, I'm sure the hospital wouldn't mind if I made you breakfast. No, <laughs> stop it. Don't be ridiculous. You just lie here and get better. Bruno and I will move in and look after Dad. Hey? Won't we, Bruno? Oh, yeah, I'd really love that. <laughs> and it won't be for long. Who knows? You might be up by lunchtime. <laughs> I'm not having spaghetti for breakfast. <laughs> Greta, that's very generous. Isn't that generous of Greta and Bruno, Ted? Yeah. Oh, Greta, the chops are in the freezer, the eggs are in the fridge. Mum, I can manage. Oh, I just thought of one other thing. What? Oh, the telegraph pole broke the milk. You'll have to buy some more. <laughs> drawing on my paper. I'm doing the crossword puzzle. It's my crossword puzzle. If anyone colours it in, I will. <laughs> you don't do crossword puzzles. I do. I do it every night. It's just they never get their clues right. <laughs> you, you get the answers wrong. No, smarty emu face, they get their clues wrong. <laughs> That's why I make up my own. It's quicker. All right, if you're so clever, what's this one? Three letters. Three letters, right. Cat. <laughs> It's three letters. I haven't even given you the clue yet. Doesn't matter, it fits. <laughs> For a start, it ends in G. Now listen to the clue. Uh, when mad gives you rabies. Three letters? Yes. Ends in G? Yes. Wog. <laughs> You rang? <coughs> what do you want? I just made your cocoa. <coughs> well, go on, drink it. You've been whinging about it for half an hour. One spoon of cocoa? Yeah. Made with milk? Yeah. Two sugars? Yeah. The big ones? Yes! I'm not drinking it. <laughs> Why not? You've done something to it. I have not. Why hasn't it got skin on the top? Thelma always gives me skin on the top. You want skin on the top? Yes. Right. That, will you? Please? What? Say please. Please. Please, darling daughter of mine. Please, darling daughter of mine. Please, darling of daughter of mine, will you kindly iron my shirt? Now listen. Say it. <laughs> please, darling daughter of mine, will you kindly iron that shirt? Iron it yourself. <laughs> Listen, girly, I've had quite enough of that devil may care glow weave attitude. Buy <laughs> the shirt. No! But I'm your father, doesn't it mean anything to you? 
Yes, it means I've inherited a really foul temper. So I and your own shirt, or I'll tell the RSL you bought a Japanese watch. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Morning. Ah, Brune, my boy. <laughs> my, 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 you are looking well. Ah, what a pleasure it is to have you staying with us and borrowing my razor. Even though you did leave the blades chocker with little black wog scraping. <laughs> I'm bloody happy because I'm with my family. <coughs> Brune? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, that's really nice. Tails? Uh, uh. Cobber? <laughs> now, what do you want? Nothing. Good. Oh, here's a thought. Would you mind running over the shirt with the iron? Certainly, Tails. No trouble at all. See? Niceness pays. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's not real good because my feet weren't very hot. Listen, you twisted little grasby groovy. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Are you totally useless? Can't you iron your own shirt? Of course I'm going to iron my shirt. It's just that I'm too busy. Busy doing what? Busy trying to eat my breakfast. Uh, where is my breakfast? In the box marked Kellogg's. <laughs> not eating that. What sort of brekkie is that for a man? It's good enough for Tony Rafferty. <laughs> Look what happened to him. One bowl of that and he still hasn't stopped running. <laughs> Why can't I have an egg? All right, you can have an egg. Right, I'll have an egg. It's in the fridge. <laughs> Why do I have to do everything round here? You told me you were moving in to look after me. We lied. <laughs> Come on, Greg, we'll be late. Well, where do you think you're going? To work. Bye-bye, Dad. What about my brekkie? All right, I'll get your brekkie. <laughs> Catch. <laughs> <laughs> is, and I've always said this, what I say is you can never have too much help. Yes, dear. Where would we be without our health? <laughs> We'd be dead, Thelma. <laughs> and then what would we do all day? It's true, Marge. Very true. Of course it's true. That's why I always say it. And another thing that I found frighteningly true, and I'm sure that you'll appreciate the frightening truth of it when I say it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Young girls today just don't know, do they? Now, isn't that frightening? Oh, <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> what don't they know? <laughs> Everything. Not like when we were girls. They get it so easy these days. How? <laughs> well, for a start, your modern doctor has warm hands. In our day, they were freezing. <laughs> Talk about your brass doctors. Who is your doctor? A Dr. Mark Temple. Oh, gorgeous man. Hasn't he got the most handsome hands? <gasps> if I could marry those hands, I'd drop the animal like a hot sponge. <laughs> Tell me, Phil, what were you before you were married? Very happy, thank you. <laughs> oh, Ted, what a lovely surprise. How are you feeling, Phil? Oh, I feel wonderful. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Get up. Let's go, mate. But, Ted, why? Because I'm hungry. Come but on, let's go. Ted. Ted, the doctor says I have to rest. Why? You haven't been doing anything. What have you done to your shirt? Oh, this. Oh, the wog left that mark with his foot. <laughs> Greeter and what's his name? They've been picking on me. Gave me cocoa without skin. Chucked an egg at me. Read my paper. Galloped over me shirt. And we left without telling me how to turn the stove on or off. Oh. <laughs> I hadn't found those little bone-shaped biscuits. I would have starved to death. <laughs> those biscuits are not fit for human consumption. I know. I rang Arnott's and got into them. <laughs> Too right I did. Listen, Mr. Sayo, I said. 
I want compensation or I'm going to come round there and blow the parrot off the side of all your family. <laughs> totally ignored me. Just kept saying at the third stroke it'll be 10.37. <laughs> There's something very strange going on over at Arnott's still. Ted, you ate the dog's biscuits. <laughs> Animal. <laughs> Who is she, Thelma? That's Marge. She's my friend. Come on, I'll pull her head in. Shh. <laughs> Marge, this is the Ted I was telling you about. How do you do? Yeah. <laughs> Her husband's a concert violinist. He's away on tour. He's a very lucky man. <laughs> What's that? What's that? End of visiting hours. You have to go now, Ted. Why? Oh, because they're bringing the lunch round. Lunch? Move over, Thelma. Her husband's <laughs> place is beside his wife. Oh, Animal. <laughs> <laughs> What a relief. Home, sweet home. Oh, hello, home. Oh, look, great, and nothing's changed. Same wallpaper, same couch, same old carpet. <coughs> Mum, you've only been away two days. Oh. Come and sit down. Oh. You haven't forgotten how to sit down. Oh, <laughs> oh, Bruno, don't make me laugh. <laughs> oh, the doctor said I am not allowed to laugh. Stitches, you know, that he particularly said to me, now, don't you let your husband make you laugh. <laughs> I think you're pretty safe there. <laughs> Would you like a cup of tea, Mum? Oh, I'd love one, dear. You'll find the tea in those little bags. Yes, Mum, I know, Mum. Don't forget to boil the water, otherwise it'll be a bit cold. <laughs> yes. Uh, Where's Ted? I don't know. He could be anywhere. We weren't expecting you home today. It's not like Ted. Kingswood's usually brought him home miles before this. <laughs> and after all, it is dinner time. Oh, okay, Steph. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, that's right. What? I don't believe it. Yeah, hang on a minute. Hold on to your stitches, Mrs B. Why? Well, it seems that good old Teddles fell off a chair at McDonald's and they've taken him to hospital. <laughs> 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 